Hello and welcome to the Whirly Black channel. This is part two of my review of the Diatone R349 HD version. I'll show you how I got it set up and configured to my Tyrannis X9D, the Betaflight configuration and the best Cadex Turtle V2 settings. But let's just have a quick look at some flight footage of this awesome little quad. First off, I'll get the buzzer installed. There's enough room between the flight stack and the Cadex Turtle camera, so just remove the canopy to make things easier. You can cut off the zip tie holding the dipole antenna and unscrew the four canopy mounting bolts. These are in a metal stack of silicon washers and grommets, so make a note of the order so you can get them back in the same order and don't lose any. There's a zip tie holding the interconnect cables, buzzer wires and the Cadex dongle lead. Carefully remove it and tidy up the wires to make room for the buzzer. Just push them into the gap between the flight stack PCBs and make sure not to damage them. Peel the backing off the foam tape on the buzzer PCB and stick it to the frame. Push it close to the flight stack so it doesn't interfere with the camera when you change the angle. Tidy up the wiring and remove the protective buzzer label. You can bolt the canopy back down with the bolts, making sure the washers and the silicon dampers are in the same order you took them off in. I could have just undone the bolts on the top part of the back of the canopy, but I just wanted to check what room there was behind the rear standoffs to mount the receiver. I also removed the zip ties on the rear arms, because I'm going to be replacing those with new ones to fit the RX antennas. I'll be using an FR Sky XSSR receiver and because the canopy and the standoffs are taller than on the standard R349 it can be mounted on the clip and held in place with another zip tie. You can bind this to the radio when it's powered up on the quad but it's a bit fiddly 
so I'll bind it before I mount it. Now, if you've ever seen one of these cables in the receiver pack and thought it was to connect it to servo pins, you'd be wrong. This is the cable to connect to your Tyrannis so you can flash new firmware. But I'm going to modify it so I can power the receiver to bind it. Just checking the wiring, I need ground, 5 volts and SBUS out. Pin 5, so I'll swap the yellow wire onto pin 5 of the connector. I'll use my Toolkit RC M8 to power the receiver. It's got a really useful servo connector lead on the side. And if you haven't seen it before, the Toolkit RC M8 is just an awesome piece of kit. Battery charger, just an all-rounder, it does everything. It's like the Swiss Army knife of tools. The quickest way to set up a new model on the Tyrannis is to copy an existing one. Just select the model you want to copy and press long enter and then choose copy model. Select the new model and change the model name. Go to page two and scroll up to bind and select it to start binding. Just press the bind button on the receiver and plug it in to apply power. You'll know when it's successfully bound when the green LED is solid and the red light's flashing. You can let go of the bind button and unplug the receiver when you see that combination of LEDs. Now as a quick check that it's all working, put the M8 into measure mode and SBUS and plug the receiver back in. The receiver green light should be solid now to show that it's bound and the red light should be off. If you don't get anything, just check that your transmitter isn't too close to your receiver. Waggle the transmitter stick around and the M8 will show the S bus is working. This is an awesome piece of kit. It's not just a great little charger, but it's a full test tool as well. And I use this all the time. Now that that's all working, you can put some heat shrink on the receiver and fix it to the clear mount that's clipped to the rear standoffs. There's a couple of convenient clips to put a zip tie on there. Just route the receiver wires out the side of the quad and I like to keep all cables neatly tucked away and clear of the props. Use another zip tie to hold the receiver in place. That's all nice and neat. You can push the antennas down through the clear mount and route them into the rear arms and fix them to a zip tie. Just cut them down and use some heat shrink to hold them in place. And when you've done that, just do the other side. That's all sorted, so now fix the transmitter dipole antenna back in place. Go around and check all the bolts are knit up tight and finally check there are no shorts between the battery connections. Just use your multimeter in continuity mode. It's better to be safe than sorry. That all looks good. So let's move into Betaflight and check the configuration. 
We've got the model set up on our Tyrannus and we've already bound the receiver to the transmitter over here. Now we just need to connect it to beta flight. Now because of the way this is wired and also because of power requirements on here, you will need a battery as well as the USB to power everything up. I've already checked with the meter that there's no shorts on here so it's safe to connect this. Now we may be a little bit too close for the transmitter. Let me just move that away a little bit. Okay, let's plug this in. There we go. First thing to do, reset the z-axis just to make sure everything's where it should be. And waggle the quad around just to make sure it's moving the same direction as the graphic on the screen. That's great. Whilst that's nice and level, we can reset or calibrate the accelerometer. That's all good. Next, ports. So we've got the USB port here, don't fiddle with that. UART 1 is set to serial RX and that's what's being used for the SBUS connection to the receiver. UART 3 is being used for the smart audio which is using IRC tramp protocol and then we've got a spare UART 6. So a quick look at the configuration. Again this is all straight out of the box. D-Shot 600, that's probably a little bit high but that's what Diatone have set and they're usually pretty good at this. The update frequency and the piddly frequencies are 8k, interesting. Receiver is set to serial and we're using SBUS as the provider. And let's see what's turned on here. OSD is turned on, we don't want air mode on, anti-gravity is on. And beeper configuration is just for everything basically. Let's have a look at the power and battery settings. The minimum cell voltage. I actually like to wind these down a bit. I find otherwise it just keeps beeping at you. 2.9 is good for the minimum and then 3 is good for warning. That's my favoured setting. So let's say save. That's good. And let's have a look at the fail safe. Okay, this is set to drop. I like to set my guard time to be 2 seconds just to be on the safe side. Let's do a save and reboot. Don't forget to do a save and reboot, otherwise when you go back to the page, nothing will have been saved. So let's so have the PID tuning. These are all standard out of the box for diatone. I have just tweaked the RC Expo to my favourite settings. This is what I prefer for a 5 inch, whether this works for a 3 inch. I don't know, but certainly my experience with the H349 Standard Edition, these RC Expo values are just about right for me. These are very personal settings. I just like a lot of throw in the middle of the movement of the sticks. I term rotation is turned on. That's great, so if I whiz the quad around with my sticks, that's all working as it should. Excellent. So look at the receiver. So we've got your, 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 throttle, pitch, and roll. That all looks good. If you find that your quad isn't moving in the direction you expect when you move the sticks, you may have actually got your channel mapping wrong. But generally if you're using SBUS, just pick FR Sky rather than default, and that should be correct. Don't forget to hit save. That's working. Quick check. Okay, let's have a look at the modes. And these are the modes that I set up. I've got an arm switch. I've got my mode switch between angle, horizon, and when I'm in acro, angle and horizon are off, and I turn air mode on. I've got my beeper working, which is on here. That's good. And flip over after crash, I've got on my switch next to my arm switch. Great. Adjustments, nothing to do there, servers, motors. Now uh, let's do a quick test to make sure that the motors are turning in the right direction. Again, make sure you've got the props off, hit that button, 
and if I flick this guy up, motor one is turning and it's going the right direction, motor two is turning, going the right direction, motor three is turning and in the right direction, and motor four is turning and going in the right direction. Perfect. Let's have a look at the OSD. I don't like too much clutter on the screen, so I generally have warning slap bang in the middle. I have my voltage in the bottom right and timer one in the bottom left. Now, I've made the mistake in the past of putting my battery voltage up in the top right hand corner here. And if you're flying normally, you've got the sky up here, so it can be a little bit more difficult to see. I prefer it down the bottom there. Now, if you move these around, don't forget to hit save. And you can change the fonts that are being used. Just go into the font manager. I prefer the extra large. Select the font that you want. Hit upload font. It will upload it to the quad and reboot. Excellent. Sensors, nothing to do there. Just check that it's working. Yes, that's good. Wiggle it around. Black box we're not using. And we go to the CLI and we can just check what version we're running. But it is shown at the top of the screen. So we're on the Fury F4 OSD. And it's beta flight 3.5.1. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I've got no experience of flying the R349 on beta flight 4. But I think we'll stick to 3.5 for the minute, since we're testing things out of the box as delivered by Diatone. So let me run through what I think are the best settings for the Cadex Turtle V2. It's pretty easy to set up. You will need to power this up. Okay, and then you can connect the joystick that comes in the model kit. There we go. Let's run through what I've got this set up as. And these are the settings that work well for me. And there's one little tweak which I found makes a really big difference. Because one of the problems is that you're using this one camera to effectively be two sensors. You've got the FPV sensor and then you've got the 1080p 60 frame per second sensor. So there's a balance between the settings of what you see in your goggles and what you see on your recorded footage. So let's go through this. In here you can put the model name if you want to. And I've got the voltage and timer set off. I don't need to see those because I've got them in my Betaflight OSD. So I'm say exit from there. Video. I'm on 1080p 60 frames a second. Loop video's off. I've got auto recording turned on. So it will start recording as soon as I connect the power. And wide dynamic range is turned on. I found that to be the better option. Camera settings. Uh, I keep the exposure at zero. So that's an exposure offset. Metering mode, metering mode is multi. Field of view high. Screen flip is on. And that's just a 50 hertz filter. Save and exit. Image effect. So the standard settings you get out of the box, everything will be set to 5. And that tends not to be too good. I find saturation works well between 7 and 8. Sharpness is best dialed right down. When you're up at 4, 5 and above, you tend to get a horrid ringing on the edges of the video. Contrast, I leave at 5. Brightness. Now, there is a very subtle difference between 5 and 4. And I found this is the magic setting for me that gives me the best balance between the image in my goggles and the recorded image on the SD card. Save and exit. Uh, NTSC doesn't matter because my goggles will automatically switch. I'll leave them at that. System settings, auto boot on, SD card. You can do all sorts of stuff in here. Don't need to do any of that. And we're on 16x9. Again, I'm on Dominator V3s, which are 16x9, so that works out well. Okay, save and exit. If you haven't tried the Diatone R349 HD, or even the standard non-HD version, give it a go. Just buy one. I just can't stop flying it. Thanks for watching. 
And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit to the channel, then please subscribe for updates. I'll see you next time.